So now that we set up the function for when the game ends, it switches to our end game view. We're now ready to design the interface because currently what we have is a simple plain and blank white screen. So within our end game interface, we have a number of different objects. Uh, the most important one we're going to be having is the one that displays our end score. We're also going to have a bunch of buttons which allow us to share our game score to Twitter or by email or SMS message to our friends or family. And then primarily have a restart game button towards the bottom. They're all the functions that are going to be placed within our end game view. So let's get our interface all set up and designed. So pretty much we're going for the same theme we've got running throughout the whole of the application. I'm going to scroll down now and we're going to start with our background image and drag and drop that in. So make sure that it's spaced all the way over. And again, very similar to how we designed the two previous interfaces. We're going to make sure that our background image is housing our background image. We're going to make sure that it is on aspect fill and that we also make sure that we clip to bounce. So now we've got the background image set up, let's place all of our labels and buttons now within the view. So again, what we're going to be displaying is our final score that we got within our game. We're also going to be displaying a bunch of buttons to share the content and then a final button to restart and play the game all over again. So we've got to think about how we're going to approach this. So what we've got on our game screen is currently very similar to what I have in mind and what I want to simply design. So let's take a few of the objects within this view and paste them into our end game view uh, just so we can keep the continuity of the game design running throughout the application. So let's take then the time remaining, the actual label here, the score and the label down below and in the, even the button. We'll take all the objects, we we'll simply copy it and we'll paste them in. Now let's place them in a similar position to how they would be on the game view. So this keeps the continuity. We have the exact labels, uh, the exact styles, everything that we're going to be needing. We're just going to take away some of the objects that we don't really need. Now before we go any further, because we've taken these objects from our previous view, they're also going to, some of them are going to have some of the connections that we created for them again on the previous view. They also have all the constraints that were given to them again on the previous view. So we need to remove all of these. So select all the objects, you can see we've got the red line going throughout them. Get down to our constraints at the bottom. And I'm simply going to select clear constraints. This will remove all the constraints from it. So there's nothing on there right now which will remove the warnings within our project. And if I click on the connections um, inspector on the side here and then go through each of our objects, and I believe it's only going to be the button that has an action still created up. So I'm going to remove that by pressing the X on it. There we go, that removes the action which was created on the button on the previous view. It's only actions that transfer over when you copy and paste in current objects within your interfaces. So now we've got this kind of uh, the base set up for us. We're going to simply have on the first label here, simply display the score. And again, within this label, this will be the score our user got once they played the game. We're going to take the information from our game view and we're going to pass it over when it switches view and display it within this label. This second little header line here, because we're using these bigger labels to be like the kind of headers to split up the content within the application. This is where we're going to simply share the score within our application. Now below here, we're going to need various buttons. So I'm going to get rid of that label there. And this is going to be simply our restart button. So once we played the game, we can then restart it and play it all over again. But it's a little bit too big for my liking at the moment. I need to have the ability to squeeze in a bunch more buttons just underneath our share score header, uh, such as um, Twitter, email and SMS, which is three buttons all together. And let's try and keep them um, a very similar size to maybe the share sc um, score button. So I simply copy and paste this in and place it underneath there. Now to check the size of our share score label, we're going to select it and then go to the size inspector. And we can see here that the height of it is 75. So our restart button here, which will now change this to share um, Twitter. I'll rename that in just a second, but what I'm going to do now is make the text size a lot smaller so it fits in a little bit nicely on the screen. So down to about 30 seems a reasonable size for us. And back in the size inspector now, you see the height is 128 
if I change this to 75 also, you can see if now, what it would look like if I squeezed in three more. Now, why 75 looked like the ideal size to kind of mirror our header here, when you place more and more buttons, it does fill it out quite a bit more. So let's maybe reduce all these button sizes. Let's go for 60. How is that going to change things? So again, we got 60 there, or our share Twitter button there, all placed in there with this height size of 60. Then we have our restart button, nice, big, and dominant on the screen. That looks pretty good. I'm quite happy with how that is looking now. So that's going to be our end game interface. So let's change all the text within it. And so we've got share Twitter. This will be share email. And this one will be share SMS. So we're almost covering all the different aspects of sharing our content within an application, uh, allowing our um, kind of users or kind of um, players to share the content to friends, family, again via Twitter, emailing them, send it to SMS. We're kind of covering all aspects. But that's pretty much how we want to design the interface in general. So maybe we could actually do with uh, actually increasing the restart button. The more I look at it now, I kind of want to reduce this a little bit more. So how does 50 look? 50 is quite a bit smaller because the, the, the dominant thing I don't want to be on the screen is sharing the content. I want them to be able to restart and play the game over and over again. So maybe having the size text size of 30 is not the greatest of ideas now. 25 seems perfect. There we go. Okay, I like this design a lot more. So feel free to play around with it however you want. So all we need to do now then is change up and add in our constraints and again, ultimately choose which is going to be the buffer object, which in this case is more than likely going to be the restart button. So then before we go to add in any constraints, we're going to select the background and we're going to pin that to all the edges around it. There we go, add that constraint in, or all four of them, should I say. And then select all the objects, so all of our buttons and our free labels there. And I'm also going to do the exact same, pin all the constraints all the way around them and add in those 22 constraints. And there we go. So once we add them in, you can see it changed up some of the objects a little bit. We got a few warnings, a few red lines here and there, but we now need to tell each of the objects what they do when they get resized on different screens. So the first thing I'm going to do then, as you can see now, is made these two labels here shrink in size, but we'll change them in just a second. I'm going to select all three of these buttons here, and no matter what happens on different screen sizes, we will make sure that we fixate all of their heights to 50, and add in those three constraints. Now for the two labels here, we're going to make sure that these have the same height and if you can remember back to when we were changing up the size of these buttons it turned out these share score kind of um, headers here were 75 in terms of their height so we're going to fixate both of their heights at 75 add those in so it trans um, transforms and changes it all up for us and then pretty much that gets rid of all the warnings but that doesn't mean we're kind of done there because what's going to happen now is the only two objects we haven't really added in constraints to tell it what it does when it changes is our kind of score label here and our restart button. So when it works and we change the different view sizes as you're going to now see, if I go smaller and smaller, it kind of changes and goes completely off the screen and that's not really what we want it to happen. So let's return then. So what we need to do then is first is we're going to select our score label here. And again, we're also going to fixate this height. And that leaves this button down here to now be the buffer object. Now, because all of these have been told what they need to do, when we change to a different screen size, it also gets smaller as well. But another thing you can see is the fact that the button gets really, really squashed. And again, that's not something that we want either. So now it means we have to look back at our constraints and kind of work and think about ourselves. What else can we adjust to make sure that this restart button doesn't do what it does? So let's return it back to the iPhone 7 screen now, the one we were developing on. So how can we do this? So one way around it is selecting these three buttons here. And if we go into the size inspector now and scroll down, you can see we slid them all to have a height of 50. And that's what we told each of the constraints. If I select them individually, you can see we have an equal height constraint of 50. But let's adjust this then. Let's completely change it. So double click on that constraint. And we've got the constant here to 50. Let's change this to, for example, 40. 
and then press enter. And then do the same now for the other two, 40. So that relieves 30 additional kind of pixels on the screen. So also bring that up to 40, enter that. So then if we went to, again, change the screen size down to the smaller iPhone screen, there's a little bit more of a leeway on the actual button itself. But again, it's not exactly what we want. So again, back to the full size iPhone 7. Now I'm gonna take both of these two label headers here, and we can actually reduce these sizes too because we got these set to 75. And again, within each of the constraints here, we got the height fixed to uh, 75, which they're both equal at. So if we repeat the process and change this from 75, we could go all the way up to 60 and change this one also to 60. So we're just simply adjusting the constraints within them. Now it doesn't again affect our um, overall interface as much. And now what you can see is the tap me button and restart button are both equal sizes. So if we go to a smaller iPhone screen now, and you can see just exactly how it looks. And we go for all the different sizes now, and you can see all the way to the big one, that it works and looks perfectly on each device. Now as always, do free or free to play around with this interface. Other ways you can adjust it is maybe decreasing the actual text size within the restart button and maybe have that the exact same size button as all the share buttons. It's entirely up to you and how you can work around it and how you can simply change it. And that's part of the challenge and where you can learn to use constraints and design interfaces. So just simply play around, try different designs, try different interfaces and uh, see what you can come up with. But now we move on to the final part of this lecture where we're going to be adding in the rounded edges on the various objects that we're going to be using uh, in the view. So how we did it before is we've used the labels, the headers here, give them rounded edges, and the buttons. Now there's a lot more kind of labels and buttons than we would usually use on our interfaces, so there's going to be quite a little bit more in general. So click on the files owner and then go to the assistant editor and then make sure, go to this little view here now, that we've got this view centered and make sure that it's currently displaying our end view controller. Now space out our outlet section here. So all we're gonna be doing is adding in the outlets of all the objects we're gonna be adding rounded edges to. So it's gonna be these two labels here and then all of our buttons. So we don't need to worry about this label just yet. We'll come on to that when we um, learn how to bring the information over to display it in. So let's start with our kind of label at the top here. And what we're going to simply do is name them label one and two of both of these two here. Because we're not using them for anything else. So it's just simple, easy to remember when it comes to the coding. And then the same comes now for the buttons. So I'll call this button one. Uh, button 2, and it's going to go all the way to button 4, and again, I'm not using them for anything else, so calling them button 1 to 4 uh, is a very simple and easy process. Again, easy for me to remember when it comes to the coding uh, of what I want them to simply do. And then finally, button 4. Perfect. So now within the view did load, we're going to go for the same process now of what we've always done to add these rounded edges. So we start with our label 1. And we do dot layer because we're working with the layer of the object. And then we're going to adjust the corner radius attributes of the layer. Now we're going to equal that to a value. And as always, we've always equaled it to 5.0, which we've kind of worked out. That's the kind of ideal corner. So you can always go increase it, make it uh, more of a rounded corner or uh, less obvious and decrease the value. But that's exactly what we want. So what we're going to do now is go to label 2 dot layer dot corner radius and that also have that equal 5.0 now we can type these out one by one but i'm simply copy and paste this now so four more there and just to save that little bit of time we can type in button one button two button three and finally button four 
So all six of the objects now are all equaling uh, for their layer of the corner radius attribute to the value of 5, which creates that nice, again, cornered effect. But as always, we need to make sure that we clip to bounds because we're not working with the object, uh, the kind of stuff within the object, we're working with the actual layer itself. So once we've got all that set up then, select all the objects again, the ones that we're using to add the corner radius to, and within the attributes inspector, make sure that we have selected on clip to bounce. Now, because I took these objects from our previous view, by default, I have them on. So if you haven't got it ticked here, make sure you've got it toggled and ticked. And then we're going to go to build and run now. And we can see exactly how it looks. Therefore, when once the game ends, switch to this end game view. And then we can see all our objects, all nicely designed. Again, working on all different iPhone screens with our nice corner radius. So we go for the motions now, we're playing the game, we get our countdown, we can now tap as many times as we possibly want, and as soon as our timer reaches zero, remember we've always got that couple of seconds or one or two seconds delay for when the game ends, to when it switches to our second view. And then once it does, you can now see it's displaying everything that we could possibly need. So in the next coming lectures, we're going to talk about how we can bring the score that we got on the game and display it within this label. How we can then share that score and the content with the various different um, kind of shareable aspects of the app and how we can focus and then press our restart button to then completely redo, restart and replay the game. And that's why we're going to be focusing on first in the next lecture.